Hello, my name is uh, Patrick Martin. I'm graduating soon from the DigiPen Institute of Technology, and this will be my final deliverable for my soft body object simulator. Uh, you see here, I have a uh, soft body object that should be falling down. It's uh, inflated using a uh, representation of the pressure force using just the ideal gas law, um, using the molar count, ideal gas constant, and the absolute temperature and its surface is actually a series of uh, springs with a uh, spring constant right here uh, holding it together. Uh, by tweaking these values around I can of course get different levels of inflation and uh, make it behave really however I want. It's essentially a filled balloon. I'm re actually simulating a uh, force of friction here uh, just this harder it's pushed down, usually due to gravity, the uh, stronger friction is. And at the bottom here, can uh, kind of can't see it because it's uh, being overlapped by the shadow. But the bottom's, of course, moving left, which is how you get this nice rolling uh, animation pretty much completely out of that. Uh, I can drop more soft body objects in, and I actually have this very fun way of handling collisions. It works very well with uh, soft body objects. I essentially have a whole bunch of particles across the surface of these objects that are detecting the uh, current closest features and I form all collision tests uh, against that. So as you see I keep dropping guys in. It is slowing down but it's not slowing down as much as previous iterations. I still have a lot of optimizations I would like to uh, work on and I'm hoping I have a chance to work on that outside of uh, just uh, my academic work. So I also have a torus here. It will go rest on top of these, kind of bounce off and flow off. I have I'm using a skin thickness to detect when I'm actually in contact. So you will see a small hole between objects. If you're using this for an actual game, you would definitely want to draw your geometry a little bigger than the actual collision mesh. Uh, to make it look right. I'm actually going to restart this real fast so the frame rate's uh, not as bad. I really should get a object deletion in, but uh, I just didn't uh, at this point in time. I was much more interested in actually simulating the physics. So here is just an arbitrary direct X mesh. Uh, I can, this works on pretty much any mesh. Uh, if it's too complex, of course, it'll go a bit slow and uh, various values should be tweaked to uh, keep the simulation stable, like the spring constant, but I can really load whatever I want. Uh, of course, can't have any degenerate polygons. It's going completely off the model actual data, and uh, you can't uh, have a triangle. Uh, triangles have to be sharing points. If I have uh, two triangles not connected, they'll just kind of fly apart and it won't look right, but that can be solved with a uh, simple vertex welding algorithm. Again, I was much more interested in just writing the physics for this than uh, getting that kind of display just right. So as you see, it's uh, interacting with the uh, soft cat model, and these spheres are also colliding with each other very nicely. I also have a collision with rigid body objects, and it's very important to still support these in uh, this day and age. Everything's being handled via impulses. Even uh, even friction is being handled through impulses. I'm just applying an impulse uh, parallel to the ground plane, essentially, to uh, compute friction on soft body objects. And rigid body objects are just using separating axis theorem. Nothing extremely fancy going on with those. And as I showed before, uh, torus will the torus will collide with everything. Um, again, there's some optimizations I'd like to make. I took kind of a hit from uh, writing the front end in uh, .NET and had some issues with the managed native code interface that is currently causing some slowdowns. I would expect I can get at least another 10 frames a second out of uh, this simulation right here just by removing uh, some of the managed code I have going. And uh, so I guess the last thing I'd like to go off is just, although it may be slow, uh, the collision detection is uh, 
works very well. So I'll drop a torus in and I'll just start stacking soft body objects uh, inside of this. Um, the one of my issues is that my broad phase is just bounding sphere. Uh, it could be really improved using like a sweep improve method or uh, any kind of bounding volume hierarchies are more tightly fitted like a oriented or an axis aligned bounding box would probably actually be very nice in this situation but as you see the objects uh, come down they collide with each other uh, they, they don't interpenetrate I can make the worst uh, wireframe and uh, they kind of bounce off each other at least how I would expect I'd imagine that that's kind of uh, how gelatin blobs would look if I started dropping them on each other inside a giant donut. Uh, and see, it is uh, stacking, it's not just falling through to the ground, being held up by its, uh, or being held inflated by its internal air pressure. Let's just get another object in here. And that is uh, most of my simulation. Uh, very, it uses, uh, like I said, ideal gas law for uh, calculating the pressure force actually computed on a per triangle basis I have a fast and actually uh, a fast iterative method for computing volume by taking uh, representative tetrahedrons of each object and uh, calculating the area of those and adding and subtracting them from a running volume count uh, here uh, one of the issues is that uh, Sometimes the interface between two objects um, is larger than the number of particles I have to detect it. In those cases, there will be a little bit of interpenetration. And, uh, of course, increasing the particle count will decrease the frame rate, but increase uh, the collision accuracy. Um, I didn't, I'm currently generating one-eighth as many uh, collision particles as I have vertices in any given object. But uh, that's my simulation. Thank you uh, for watching. I'll uh, post this video and a copy of my final simulation at www.patricksd.com. And uh, that's about it.